interested in climate engineering because I'm convinced that we are in very, very deep trouble on climate change. It's about the future, what kind of future we want to create. Climate engineering is a cure we love to hope that we will never need. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the CEC 17. Climate engineering falls into two parts, solar radiation management and carbon removal from the atmosphere. One part is to try and reduce the amount of sunlight that is reaching the Earth, which is causing warming. The second part of climate engineering involves trying to remove the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Climate change is really devastating our countries. And if there's a way of stopping that through climate engineering, Having an option when times get rough, and times are going to get rough really soon, is something what everyone really hopes from geoengineering. We need to reduce the emissions to zero, but many scientists say that that is simply not enough, and we may have to go and look at other options. I don't think that um, our ambitious climate targets are only achievable with um, climate geoengineering. So what I would like us to focus on is to really enforce the implementation of the proven solutions that we know that work to radically reduce our emissions and to restore our natural ecosystems. Is it something that we're going to get addicted to? Who decides if we would do such a thing? How to address the issue of ethics governing this issue in context of a developing country. Is it feasible, is it possible in the context of democratic societies with diverse opinions and a lot of foolish people who elect leaders who tell them about what they want to hear even if it's not true? My biggest fears are that the technology could really be uh, uh, misused as uh, different political entities uh, disagree about how to use it, you could get outcomes that were worse than if we didn't have the technology at all. Which expertise is counted and accounted for? Is it only the modelers, the climate scientists, the engineers? What about the knowledge of farmers, indigenous peoples, about social sciences? I think what makes CEC 17 unique as a conference is that it brings together the many different uh, people, the many different groups, uh, people with very different backgrounds that are uh, involved in this conversation. It's important that we um, pay attention to governance that takes into account broad international interests, equity, and legitimacy of the knowledge that we're producing. The science community has not framed issues in the context of political realities, in the context of political timelines, and spoken in language to the politicians. Most of the people involved in this simply care about trying to reduce climate impacts. And it's not about some people thinking we should have some kind of technosphere in the future, and not about others who say we all need to go back and live in the woods, but rather all see us heading towards a sustainable future that's built on where we are now and see different ways of getting there. So I'm a grandfather now, and I'm much more driven than ever before uh, about these issues because I wouldn't want my grandson to grow up in a world uh, which would be three, four degrees warmer than the historical average. But I also don't want my son to grow up in a world where all kinds of strange technologies are used without him having any control over it. 